Hey, what's up everybody? Today I wanted to do something a little bit different. So I know that I made previous character corners videos and a lot of you guys responded with great comments and I want to bring the, take the time to highlight these comments, but also take the time to maybe answer these questions so that if ever you have those questions, well, now they'll be answered. So you can thank these people for, from, uh, from, for commenting. <laughs> All right, so let's go uh, with the first one we got here. All right, so this commenter says, recently got diagnosed with this. My right eye kind of went suddenly from being my better eye to nearly useless. The last six to seven months. Fortunately, my left eye is still very strong and I can't get by without glasses 90% of the time due to having a natural 20-30 vision. Going in for cross-linking on my right eye in a few weeks, hoping I can get uh, contacts after the fact to fix the vision. It's crazy how hard it is to explain to people what I see from out of my bad eye. At night, every single light will turn into 38 different randomly scattered images of that daylight, of that light, all with halos and all the lights connected by a bright line of light. I feel that I'm extremely fortunate to have only slight symptoms in my left eye. So my solution 90% of the time when looking at stuff is just to close my right eye. I haven't have an eye patch for it. Mixing the image, uh, mixing the images from both eyes can be incredibly confusing and exhausting. 100% agree that it affects your mental state. I refuse to drive at night unless necessary. I, str I struggle to track fast moving objects so sports are out of the window. I play video game very frequently, but even that has become to suffer because I just can't always make out the images fast enough. All right, here's his comment. Hashtag birdie. That was a year ago. So um, I did respond to this comment as you can see here, but um, it's been a while. So I, I'm wondering how did it go? How did the whole procedure go? How's your vision right now? But to answer that comment, yes, it is very hard. I spent the better part of having character corners not be able to drive at night. Fortunately, it's something that I'm able to do now. But as he mentioned, it's something that I do very rarely. I try to do very short distances. I really, I am trying not to push my luck when it comes to this. A lot of people don't understand that. If you don't feel comfortable with your abilities when you're driving, you don't want to be a liability. And I think that most responsible people decide to not drive in these conditions. That's exactly what I, what I did, what I would do. What I would consider that everybody does, uh, because at this point, in my humble opinion, if I drive like that, especially back then when it was very severe before I had the, the corneal transplant, it's like a DUI. You know, if you, you know your faculties are affected, you can't drive that well, don't do it because if something happens, it ain't going to be worth it. All right. So here's another comment here by Roy. Um, dash QW9MQ. All right, great video, bro. I feel you, even though mine is not as advanced as yours, character corners is something you only understand if you have it. When I try explaining to my family and friends how my vision is or how traffic signals at night looks like, firework display, I either get laughed at or get weird looks, but I get on with it. I was diagnosed at the age of 20. I'm now 35. I've coped with glasses, never tried contact lenses. The glasses gave me 20. 2025 vision and 2030 vision, but with halos and ghosting, which can't most of the time tell my brain to ignore, but sometimes not. I'm guessing it will hopefully have stopped progressing now. And I, and I'm want, and I'm wanting to finally fix things. I just want the halos, ghostings, and multiple images to go away. It's so depressing. When I was diagnosed, I was told eye robbing might be the cause. I know as a child, as a teenager, I rubbed my eyes a lot. When I was diagnosed, no matter how itchy my eyes got, I never rubbed them. And guess what? Nearly 15 years after diagnosis, my KC hasn't really progressed. As I still use the same glasses for driving computer and watching TV. So in my case, I think that eye rubbing was a, ma was a major, if not the only factor which led to my KC. Because I am one of six siblings, no one have KC, neither do my parents or grandparents or my extended family, uncles, aunties from both of my parents' side which is good to hear on my side. Same thing. Uh, no one in my family has keratoconus, the, the, the genetical portion of it maybe does not apply. Um, as far as I know, my grandparents didn't have, uh, those issues as well. I mean, my, my, my grandfather's walking around. He's got, I, I think he barely has glasses. I think they all have reading glasses, but that's about it. Most of the people in my, my family, I actually have great vision. <laughs> so I think that's why it's so hard for people to understand. They have really good vision and 
I mean, uh, it's true that rubbing your eyes is said to be one of the causes. It's true that I try to do everything to not rub my eyes. I have a whole lot of tricks that I try to use. But when it comes to my case, you know, my eyes are very, very sensitive. So I wouldn't even rub them because they're, my eyes are really, really sensitive. Um, I mean, I go outside on a sunny day and I start crying because it burns. If it's windy, I'm going to cry because of that, you know. So definitely do understand that. I hope that you continue to feel good um, because you have, uh, like you said, you had a good natural uh, vision. And you were able to get by with your glasses. So that's a good thing. I'm so happy that I'm able to get by with mine now. So um, good thing hearing that, Roy. And uh, hope to see you back. You know, if you got anything, just let me know. Oh, actually, Roy did comment it again and said, yes, driving at night was a pain. Although I could see the distance, every street light traffic signal and oncoming car lights and halos and light, light streaks. The most annoying thing was how when I wake up in the morning, my vision was better. And by the night, it would deter deteriorate. I'll be 36 old in a few weeks, and I'm hoping KC won't progress any further as I've had it for nearly 15 years, and hopefully it's not done the damage it needed to. That's why I'm thinking next year I'm going to try to get myself some scarrow lenses to see if I can reduce slash eliminate the ghosting slash halos. The reason why I haven't tried any contact lenses to date is because lenses sit directly on the cornea, which KC is already weakened. Then the lens rubs against it, which will be further weakened, causing the KC to progress. But hopefully, I'm not past that stage. And from what I've read, scaroglasses don't touch a cornea. They vault over it. That is true. I, I'll say right now that I've tried them. When I had them, they worked very good. There's a reason why I was not able to continue wearing them. But it's just because I've had scarring on my eyes. So there's actually, there was a scar on my eyes. That's the reason why it was very uncomfortable. But I've talked to so many people, whether it is in the waiting room, you know, when we go to get get our eye tests or surgeries, and I talk to people that actually have keratoconus as well. They generally are older than I am, uh, which I realized I was always the youngest person in those waiting rooms. But every time we had these conversations, they would just told me about, about how this actually changed their life. And, you know, for me, I had to go a different route. But I realized, I, I remember I had those, I paid for them. Um, it didn't work out for me but I am in a minority. Very important to know that I am in a minority when it comes to that. All right, let's keep going. Camilo Escobar 3597. A year ago, uh, let me know that your message is really encouraging. I was diagnosed 10 years ago, but I barely, and I barely, but I mean barely rub my eyes. Stupidly did it in college on a stressful days. It happens, man. We don't know. When you don't know, you don't know, right? And that's why we're trying to raise awareness so that People, you know, if, if you have good eyesight right now and your eyes don't have any issues, stop robbing your eyes. Might avoid you a whole lot of issues. <laughs> but now that's over, so I don't do it no matter what. So the cross-linking, no cross-linking yet, and my keratoconus has progressed a little bit. I get 20, 20 in my good eye, and I get 0 .0, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 vision in the other with glasses. No ghosting. And the only time I would get ALOs is at night after I've been at the computer the whole day. Otherwise, none. Reading your case gives me hope that hopefully this won't progress too much. I'm 28 because it's really scary. Did you get uh, the cross-linking? I don't know if I should get it. My doctor told me that Casey is stable. My character is stable, but the thought of it progressing is very stressful. Um, Yes. Camilo Escobar, I will tell you right now that if I would have known how degenerative this disease is, I would have gotten the cross-linking done as early as I could. Unfortunately, being young, I thought, yeah, I mean, it's not going to affect me until way later in life. That's the biggest issue that I've, I've had and I've done with. Um, you know, I had good visions be before this happened, so that's why it was very much a surprise to me. So would I get cross-linking? Um, yes, I did get the cross-linking and I would recommend uh, most people to get it at least to halt the progression, especially if you still have good vision. Now, it's really it would be really important to look into this before you start losing your vision. Fortunately for me, I had the cross-linking after it started to progress very rapidly. So it stopped it from going too far, but the cross-linking itself could not save my vision because it was already gone. It was already far gone. So... I would recommend people to get it if you can. Always talk to your doctor. Tell them about the avenues that you have. Tell them to give you options so that you can take your time and review the options. And like that, you'll be able to make an informed decision. That's what everything, all of this is all about. Sharing information, sharing our experiences. 
so that you can make an informed decision. Is, I'm guessing you mean, does Kurt Konis stop at age 30? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm past age 30 and I'm still dealing with it. So no, I, it doesn't stop. Um, the only way for you to stop it is to treat it, either halt the um, the degeneration of your cornea or have scare lenses or lenses to be able to help you with your vision. But as I understand, if you don't do anything about it, it will just keep getting worse and worse. For some people, it'll get worse quicker. For some people, it'll take more time. So your mileage will vary but it doesn't stop at the age of 30, unfortunately. So uh, we have user dash F U four X Y one Z P four W. I'm just saying it the way it is. Thank you for the information. Uh, four to six months, they are going to put a corneal transplant in my left eye. I am so scared. I did respond to that, but I will let you know once again, it's okay to have a little bit of trepidation, but you don't have to be scared. The procedure itself is, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you and say, oh, it's great. It, it's not, but it's not as bad as you think it could be. I mean, the worst part of it is just that your eye will be open while it's happening. There's different ways of doing the curriculum Um, I sorry to say the corneal transplant. They might put you under. In my case, I decided not to be put under because I didn't want to wait for someone. So I decided just to go like a little cold numbing drops. I have to say from my personal experience that the corneal transplant was went better than the actual cross-linking which i know for some people it's not the same but for me when i had the cr cross-linking it hurt so bad like right after oh my god and the corneal transplant maybe it's because of the numbing solution they put in my eye but i walked out of there got into the car got back home took a little nap like it was just a little bit more calm but i have to disclose they did give me a little something some for my anxiety so they really calmed me down. I don't know what the kind of thing they give you when you go on an airplane, a little valley. I don't know what they call it. I took it. They said, you want it? I said, I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> that's about it. But I do hope that the corneal transplant goes better. And I said in the comments, get back to me. Please comment back and tell me how it went. A whole lot of people want to know. And it's better to hear it from other people than just hear it from the same person, me. All right, Latoya Amani. I love that name, Latoya. For years, I was told it was astigmatism or anastigmatism. By my late 20s, I found a doctor whew, that, ref, that referred me and found out I had KC. I did the cross-linking in my left eye, but my right needs a corneal transplant. Here we are nine years later, and I'm being referred to try scarol lenses. I tried the, the hard and piggyback, no bueno. In a year, I'll be able to get the transplant. It feels good to know I'm not alone. It's hard to explain KC to others. Yep, that's the reason why I made this video because every time I was talking to people, they also looked at me like I was crazy, like I was making something up. And I'm like, no, my eyes are really messed up. When I made my first video and y'all commented and let me know, hey, you're not alone, I'm going through this too. I mean, that really, really, really helped. So whenever you have to explain it, go on here, just tell them, hey, Google it, send them a link. You know, there's plenty of videos out there explaining what it is. So like that, you don't have to. All right, Mr. Tennessee, Mr. Titan, Mr. Tennessee, 1988. He said, people will never understand. They don't understand. It's a permanent disease that us fighters can't and will never get rid of. I lived with the dis disability since I was 19 years old. There was one day where there's, there was heavy rain and I had to pull over because I couldn't see anything. I sat on the shoulder and cried until it stopped raining. I felt helpless at that point. I've had cross-linking in my right eye and it helped somewhat. My left eye was too far coned out to have anything done, but it's stable now. I've been through several different lenses, doctors, specialists, etc., etc., and I I mean scarol I have scarol lenses now and I can say it's definitely been a game changer. It's not ideal, but it definitely works for me. All I can say, guys, it's keep fighting and don't give up. Listen to Mr. Tennessee right now. Mr. Tennessee just told you what you need to know. You are a fighter. We are fighting with this. And we're not going to give up because it's our lives, right? There's the moment where I knew I couldn't drive anymore. Like I couldn't in good conscience, knowing that if I drive and something happened, I would feel so bad. Man, that, that day I cried because my license was my freedom, you know? That was like an accomplishment and whatnot. And to have that taken away from me 
knowing that I haven't, you know, it's like, like I had like a drinking and driving issue or, you know what I mean? I had like a bunch of tickets or something like that. Just losing that ability was, I mean, it really gutted me. Uh, yeah, I was gutted. So thank you very much, Mr. Tennessee, for sharing your story. Um, thank you very much for reminding us what we are. We are fighters. And like you said, can't and never will get rid of it, but we will manage it. We will deal with it. And that's what we're doing. So big shout out to Mr. Tennessee, 1988. Woo! The homie Mutton Chops 24 says, I think your video misrepresent the comfort of scarrow lenses. They are the most comfortable contacts you can buy. Yes, they are hard, but they sit on the whites of your eyes where there are very few nerve ending. They, they are very comfortable and help with keratoconus tremendously. Now, I did answer to my, my homie Mutton Chops. Uh, I did tell him that I was talking about my personal experience. And I know that a lot of people share that experience, but he's right. He is right. As we mentioned before, they don't sit on the cornea. They help a lot with character corners. When I tried them on, I'm telling you my vision was perfect. It's just when I had to put them back on again, and when I was wearing them for an extended time, that's when it really started to be uncomfortable. But for a lot of people, it works. For a lot of people, they don't need... It's like I had the cross-linking. I had a tra corneal transplant. When... Some people go to get the cross licking surgery. That's all they need. You know, their vision is good. They get, you know, someone diagnosed them in time and they're able to get it fixed before anything else happened. Then people may not even need glasses. Some go by with glasses. Like we're all different. We're just in the same fight. We all have different ways to cope with it, different ways to deal with it. But I really do appreciate what he said, because if ever I misrepresent them, that was not my intention. My intention was to represent my experience i can't represent everybody's experience but i do appreciate the uh clarification all right chilling like a vill i like i like your handle chilling like a villain i like that he says or they say for menus behind the cash register i now have to open my phone camera and enlarge it so i can see everything or anything yup that's exactly what i did go out with my friends like what are you doing i'm like i'm taking a picture of the menu then i go over there on the side and i look at it then i make my order then i come back to the line use technology whenever you can you know i gotta say i'm always fighting for accessibility options because when i got the character corners the first thing i noticed was i couldn't play games anymore because i couldn't read menus or any subtitles or any anything on the screen and it took like about two and a half years like literally me going on forums and be like, hey, you know, quality of life changes. Why can't we just change the text? Just the size of the text. Why can't you just let me do that? And hopefully more and more studios are now making their games with you being able to change the, the, the size of the text, which helps tremendously. I mean, we have to use whatever we can. Chilling like a villain, just a uh, chilling like a veil just gave us the, the perfect example. So for a lot of things that you can't see, Take a picture, enlarge it, and hey, maybe you'll become a photograph because of that. <laughs> but I, I, we got to do what we got to do, you know? All right, so here we have Roy Trajeski. I don't know, maybe I'm botching it, sorry. Roy Trajeski. Tra Trajeski? Anyways, 1911-97. They say, hi there, I've been diagnosed with KC two years ago at the age of 25. Living in the Netherlands with a nice healthcare system, everything is insured. I went to the specialist three times to check my eyes, rub my eyes so heavily and often when I was younger, but I won't rub anymore since my, di since my diagnosis. Today, I went to the specialist for the third time because of dry eyes caused by eight hours a day behind the computer screen, but I was scared that this was a sign of progression. I was scared so much that it had, pro that it had been progressing. My right eye has Carol lens and my left eye still is perfect, but I was scared for both eyes being worse. They told me I need to, I need to use fluid to calm down irritated, irritated dry eyes when it occurs. As they told me the last two years, my eyes didn't progress in a negative way. I am so happy about this, knowing that it did not progress and I'm 27. I really hope I really had my progression period when I was younger. All right. So to this, I will say, yes, your eyes will get drier than most people. And that's why. Boop. I don't know if you can see. So these are my little hydrocents, my artificial tears. Got to put those twice a day or else we got troubles. And, you know, 
this once a day. So I totally get you. It will happen. My The last time I actually went to see my eye doctor, he told me, now you really need to put these twice a day. Even if you don't feel that they're dry, you need to hydrate them as much as possible. Uh, there's also like a nice little mist. Uh, I can't remember the name of it or whatever, but you can look into it. My 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 last doctor told me, you know, you should, and I had it for a while. It was really good. It's like a little mist and you're good to go. So you don't have to do that thing. So if ever, let's say you're in a situation where you need to put something in quickly and you can't uh, throw your head back, well, that might be something that can work as well. I gotta say, I'm really happy, man, to hear that it did not progress for you. I That's such a good feeling to know that, okay, it's under control, it's not getting worse. So hopefully it keeps continuing like that for you. And um, yeah, just best of luck. All right, now we have Ryan, Ryan, T-U-N, 7779 says, thank you for this video. I had a hard time expressing how this condition influenced me. This question, why don't you get glasses? I just shattered, it just shattered my heart every time someone asks this. The situation with the menu is also so familiar. Thank you for sharing this relatable video. It's a relief to see more people in this condition fighting their way in life. Well, Ryan, all I can tell you is thank you very much. Uh, I know I answered, I answered to the things, but I still wanna acknowledge you right here. Thank you. It's people like you that helps people like us. When people ask that question, why don't you just get glasses? Okay, I have glasses now, so no one tells me that. But yeah, it's a question people ask all the time and then you have to remind them that glasses don't fix everything. It's a con it's just a misconception. It does shatter your heart every time because you just feel like you're not being heard every time. Um, to that, I would say the same way that, hey, listen, my mama used to tell me in the Bible, they say, uh, uh, God forgive them for they don't know what they do. And that's how that's how you gotta be with people. Sometimes they don't know what it is. I'm like I'm pretty sure if I was in their situation and someone would tell me this, maybe I would react the same way. I'm just blessed that I went through this, so I don't have to live like that. And I understand other people a little bit better when someone tells me about something that's you know a illness they have or something that's ailing them. I understand that regardless of what I see, that's not important. What's important is what they're telling me and how they feel. So. It's a misconception. Unfortunately, it's it's one that we have to deal, you know, we deal with con constantly. Thank you very much for your comment. Keep your head up. Once again, best of wishes for you. Mole Bogan, I'm not even gonna try. 4935 <laughs> says, uh, just been diagnosed on my left eye and it's proving to be a pricey journey fixing this condition. They recommended a laser to push down slash adjust the cornea, then an option for contact lenses but I prefer glasses because my eyes are very sensitive and I have allergies. When you say that it's a it's pro proving to be a pricey journey, I definitely understand it. I know that we, I just read a comment from someone that lives um, in the Netherlands and they had great system, everything was covered. For me, not everything was covered. The cross-linking had to pay it out of my pocket to a private doctor, it costs a lot of money. It's a few thousand dollars uh, for that procedure. Yeah, depending on your, health provider, health carrier, whatever it is, depending on the health system that you have in your country as well, it can be pricey. You know, we're not gonna lie about that. About that. It can be very pricey. So, you know, always look to see if your government have some kind of programs, some kind of things like that. Uh, always trying to see if you can get insurance. I know it sounds like it's not something that I can say that can make the situation better. I'm just saying I know what it's like. I had to pay out of pocket for a lot of stuff and it set me back in life. You know, I'm just hoping that situations are changing. I know a lot of people, a lot of countries, a lot of things are changing on a, almost on a yearly basis. So hopefully you can find some support that can alleviate the cost of it. It is an investment, but you're worth it. Cause I remember the days where I couldn't see clearly. And when I think about those days and I think about now, I'm just, Hey man, I'm lucky. I'm blessed. Thank you. So hopefully you'll be blessed as well. Hopefully you can find ways to be able to help you. I know it's expensive, but you are worth that expense. You are worth that expense. All right, so we have another um, comment here from Versa Verse Creations. They say, I first got detected on my right eye because even with unusual contact, no, so with, even with usual contact lenses, I still couldn't see clearly and started to feel dizzy. So I went for a checkup and a doctor said I need to have cross-linking surgery ASAP before I go blind. My left eye was still okay at that time, even though it also had keratoconus. 
Now it's been two years and my right eye can't still use normal contact lenses because I still can't see clearly. And my left eye starts to deteriorate as well. It becomes much blurry, much more blurry than two years ago. I am used to depending on my left eye a lot, but now it's been hard for me to see clearly now. I'm afraid my keratoconus on my left eye worsens and needs surgery, but it's costly. Now, every day I feel dizzy because of the imbalance between the two eyes. I have the, kind of the same thing. I have one eye that's really worse than the other eye. Um, thankfully, with glasses, they can be corrected a little bit more. I had the same issues would make me dizzy, would make me feel like I'm never really like balanced. I would walk and not be able to know my distance as well. So my, my peripheral vision will be all messed up. So on one side, I think I'm okay. And the other side, I think I'm okay, but I'm not. So I would I would kind of like banging to stuff a lot with my, my, my shoulders. That was very hard. I'm very grateful that my corneal transplant was um, something that was insured. You know, I'm always going to say the same thing. Yes, it's costly, but you are worth it. That doesn't mean that it's easier to get the money if I say that. Yes, I know that you most likely will have to make sacrifices and whatnot, especially if it's not something that you were planning on, you know, spending all that money on or if you don't have like a safety net or whatnot. But... I'll repeat myself to nauseam, you are worth it. So Versa verse creations, you are worth it. Your name is creation. So something tells me that you also have a creative spirit. And for me, I had to save my, my, my site, at least for this, you know, at least for that. So I can still be able to make my videos. I can still be able to enjoy the art. I can still be able to create things. I know that you're worth it. And hopefully everything gets settled. If it does, if anything happens, please leave me another comment. I'll be in your corner. I want to be in your corner. I want to be there for all of y'all. So let that be said. All right. So it's Joseph875. They say, all you said was facts, especially for how it feels socially. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it's, it is what it is. Anthony Wash here told, uh, told me that he lived with it for 40 years. And that's really, really good. Um, a good comment, a person that you should listen to when it comes to experience. He told me that he had no cross-linking, just hard contacts which he found uncomfortable, but thankfully by 25, my keratoconus stopped deteriorating and it's only bad in my right eye. So my left eye doesn't, does the heavy lifting. So I'm glad that you're in this, in a, in a case of Anthony Walsh here that the keratoconus stopped deteriorating, deteriorating. That's really good. And that's something I didn't know. He says that his keratoconus come from allergies in the eighties. Antihistamines were almost toxic, putting you to sleep during classes, much better options now. So that's good to know. Edward 1937 says that why don't you get glasses is one of the most annoying things I can be asked by so many people. It is like asking someone in a wheelchair and telling them what are just, why don't you use crutches? If I could use glasses, I would be using them instead of contacts or at least have them as a backup. A little thinking can go far. Yes, Edward. Uh, people tend to not really think before they open their mouth. Sometimes people think that curiosity is enough of a justification to ask questions sometimes. And you know, I think that in school they used to tell people there is no stupid question. But let's be honest, there is stupid questions or at least those that lack awareness. And man, I know exactly where you come from. What you just said here, um, it's like telling someone in a wheelchair, why don't you use crutches? Hey, I feel you. I can't, I think we can all come down and say, yeah, we, we feel you on this. We agree with you on this. Maybe we should start telling people that, you know, maybe they would understand, Hey, just, do you just understand what you told me? Maybe that's what they need, you know, but people are like that sometimes. And as I said before, they don't mean to be like that. I think it's just a habit. It's just a thing that socially is more acceptable to ask certain questions, even though they may be dumb because they'll tell us that it's our job to not respond in a way that makes them feel dumb, which I don't think it's true, but just that's just the way it is. So I'll say the same way that my mama told me when I was a little bit younger, you know, she used to tell me all the time, forgive them for they don't know what they do. If they had Kurt Taconis, they would understand and they would never say that, but they don't, so they don't understand. It's as simple as that. But thank you, Edward, I'm gonna use that one. Why don't you use crutches? <laughs> All right, Stan5964 says, thank you so much for this video. It totally expressed the frustration and anxiety I have from this condition. When I go out to eat, I always take pictures of the menu so I can read it. It's also challenging trying to deal with it. I still struggle as 
I, as I feel it affects every aspect of my life. I had, I too had cornea transplant and mostly use glasses and at RPG lenses, super uncomfortable. He says, this video is super relatable. Thank you for sharing. So some people agree. Some people may disagree, um, that some people say it's comfortable. Some people say it's uncomfortable, just shows you that we have different bodies. And so we can't assume for everyone else. We can only speak for ourselves. but I thank you very much for sharing that, uh, that comment for commenting, taking the time to comment because yeah, the, the, the menu thing, I feel like I'm not alone. Cool. But thank you very much for saying that it's relatable. I just, when I did it, I was just frustrated and I'm like, you know what? Let me just put it on video. And I'm so happy that I did because it turned out pretty good. So thank you very much for that guys. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a break, but I'm not, it's, we're not over yet. We're not done yet. Not by a long shot. Um, I'm going to do a part two, part three, if needed, I want to go through as many comments as possible and answer as many questions as possible because you deserve it. So thank you very much for watching this one. This one is all for you. If you have more questions, please put them in the comment box down below. Like this video if it helped you in any kind of way. And as I always say, if you know someone that could be helped with this video, please share them with them. Just share the knowledge, share the wealth. As always, see you on the next one.